Hello, we meet again in the news broadcast daily and following on today's highlights. Prime Minister Nguyễn Tân Dũng meets former UK Prime Minister Tony Blair. A house with strong connection to Vietnam in Paris suburb becomes historical relic site. Big crowds at Andang Bull Racing Festival. Prime Minister Nguyen Tân Dung has said Vietnam is keen to join the United Kingdom in efforts to develop their strategic partnership in every aspect, especially politics, diplomacy, economics, trade, investment, tourism and education training. While receiving former UK Prime Minister Tony Blair in Hanoi on October 15th, Dung said the visit would strengthen the strategic partnership between Vietnam and the UK. He said he hopes that the UK will continue to provide ODA to Vietnam, focusing on developing infrastructure and adapting to climate change. The Prime Minister also values Blair's offer to share experiences with Vietnam during its reforms and international economic integration. Blair said he is willing to share his experiences with Vietnam to help reform the economy and state-owned enterprises, attract more foreign investment, adapt to climate change, introduce public-private partnerships, develop education and training, and ensure environmental protection. He also said he will do his utmost to foster the strategic partnership that both nations share. He said he believes Vietnam will play an increasingly important role in the world and praised ASEAN on its six-point stand on a C issue. Vice President Nguyen Thị Doan has urged the Francophone community to adjust its policies to seek more resources and promote greater cooperation with international and regional partners such as the United Nations, European Union and African Union. Speaking at the closing ceremony of the 14th Francophone Summit in Kinshasa in the Democratic Republic of Congo, on October 14, Zwan acknowledged the good results of the community in all fields, as well as its effort to strengthen its international position by participating in resolving global issues and debates among member nations. She said Vietnam has always made efforts to contribute to the global French language community, support solidarity among member countries, and taken initiatives to promote it, especially in helping poor and developing countries grow their economies, stabilize their political and social situations, and integrate into the world. At the closing section, leaders of the community approved the Kinshasa communique resolutions against piracy in the Gulf of Guinea, and cooperative documents to boost the use of the French language. This year's Francophone Summit brought together representatives from 56 French-speaking countries to discuss a wide range of issues around the theme environmental and economic challenges in the face of global governance. A house with a strong connection to Vietnam in a Paris suburb has recently become a historical relic site. The house served as an accommodation for officials from the Provisional Revolutionary Government of South Vietnam during their negotiations for the signing of the Paris Accords to end the Vietnam War. A plaque signifying the title was embedded in the wall of the house in a ceremony held by the municipal administration of Vergea Lubisong City on October 13. House number 49, now number 17, provided accommodations between 1968 and 1973 for the delegation of the Provisional Revolutionary Government of South Vietnam. The delegation was led by Foreign Minister Nguyen Thị Bình, who then became Vice President of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. This is an important event for the city, 
which has helped us to remember when the country went through a period of serious difficulties with the campaign uniting with the Vietnamese people. I'm moved when I see the image of Madame Nguyen Thị Bình, as she reminds me of the demonstrations that many thousands of French students and myself took part in 1967 to voice support for the Vietnamese people's struggle for justice and peace. On this occasion, an exhibition showcasing photos and news articles on Vietnam and the screening of a documentary film capturing activities of the delegation of the Provisional Revolutionary Government of South Vietnam during the mentioned period were held. The Mekong Delta exported 377,000 tons of trafish worth 1.1 billion US dollars in the first nine months to 133 countries and territories across the world. This represents a drop of 3.2% against the same period last year, according to the Mekong Dentist Steering Committee for Chair Fish Production and Consumption. The U.S., EU and ASEAN currently consume 59% of the region's total chair fish exports. This year, the region has produced 833,000 tons of chair fish, which were reared in over 3,000 hectares of fish farms with an average productivity of 265 tons per hectare. According to the National Fisheries Institute of the U.S., chair fish has jumped three places on the list of 10 most consumed seafood in the U.S. from 9th in 2010 to 6th in 2011. A special sports, cultural and tourism festival featuring members of the Cham ethnic group is underway in the central province of Ninh Thuận. The three-day festival kicked off on October 14 is taking place at the same time as the group's traditional Gate festival. Various cultural activities like art shows, traditional costume shows, brocade weaving contests, a culinary fair and sports competitions were organized in the province. The event attracted 10 people from nine localities including Bình Thuận, Phú Yên, An Giang, Tây Ninh, Hồ Chí Minh City and Đồng Nai. The localities will take turns hosting the event, which will be held every three years. According to statistics from 2008, the Cham group was ranked 14th in population size when compared to all 54 ethnic groups in the country, with 145,000 members. The Bay Nui Boon Racing Festival took place in the Triton district of the Mekong Delta province of Anzang on October 14th. The event is part of activities to celebrate the Khmer Ethnic Minorities Senadonta Festival. More than 25,000 people traveled to the district to experience the event. This year's festival saw 64 pairs of oxen from the districts of Anzang and two districts in Kinsang province compete against each other. Two teams from Kiribom district in Cambodia's Takia province also took part in the festival. According to the organizers, this year's festival went very smoothly, creating a safe and jovial atmosphere for the Khmer ethnic community to celebrate the Sand Donta Festival. At this year's event, many Khmer ethnic people have come to cheer on their favorite team. The number of visitors at this festival is also much higher than in previous years, and people are also more aware of the event. This year, with the agreement of the authorities in Chiton and Tinh Binh districts, the organizers decided to hold the festival in turns, one district at a time. Today, the Bay Nui Boon Race has established itself as one of the most important annual traditional festivals for the Khmer ethnic community in the Mekong Delta province. And this is the end of our news today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.